And this is actually the power of the Qur'an in this regard. As much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pushing us to forgive, and as much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the repentance having a way forward, Allah does not use kind language towards oppressors and transgressors in the Qur'an, the way He uses it to a person who sins on their own and has their individual sins. The language that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to oppressors is, don't think you're going to get away with this. Don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unaware. Don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not see you're wrong. اتَّقُوا الظُّلْمِ فَإِنَّ الظُّلْمَ ظُلُمَاتٌ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Beware of wronging someone because it will be darkness for you on the day of judgment. So the language that Allah uses towards the person doing the oppressing and doing the wrongdoing is very harsh language. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply leaves a window of tawbah without speaking lovingly to that person. And this is something that some of the ulama mentioned. Allah speaks lovingly to the sinner in the Qur'an, calls them back to Allah. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, O oh, my servant who has transgressed against themselves, don't despair from the mercy of Allah. But when Allah speaks to the oppressor, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَتَنُوا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَتُوبُوا فَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمُ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْحَرِيقُ Those who have harmed and put to trial the believing men and the believing women, and they don't repent. They have a way to repentance as well. But the language is a lot harsher. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put them into hellfire and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them severely. So there has to be an initiation. And if you are on the other side of that, do not let your arrogance and do not let your sense of immunity stop you from going and seeking forgiveness from someone that you've harmed. And do not depend on the other person's tazkiyah to get you out of hell. That person might forgive you because they want a higher reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you still might be punished because you need to be forgiven by that person and by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so there's that balance of a higher incentive for a person to forgive and a higher sense of urgency to go seek forgiveness. Don't think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unaware. But dear brothers and sisters, it was complicated for the companions. None of these situations, none of these ayat that came down, none of these ahadith that came down ignored people's complexities. They just called us to the highest version of ourselves. And the believers always strive to be in the best position. And I end with this thought, subhanAllah. Was there ever anyone that could come to the Prophet sallallahu and say that he wronged them and did not provide them any recourse? One of the proofs of his prophethood, in fact, that the scholars mention, is that as many of these things happen as, a nature, as, as natural as it is between human beings, not a single person could come to the Prophet ﷺ when he started his call and say, but remember, you still owe me this, and you still did this to me, and you did that to me, and you did this to me. Rasulullah ﷺ had no grievances against him. Even in the, in the heat of the climate, no one could bring forth a personal grievance against the Prophet ﷺ. Think about that. Think about that. May Allah free us from being grieved on the Day of Judgment by our own sins and transgressions. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to get past our own grievances with a higher reward. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comfort us in a way that only He can comfort us. Allahumma ameen.